Let's take a quick look at our grading criteria. Now keep in mind, your design has to have both embossed, which are the raised areas, and it must also have etched areas, which are the areas that are lowered or indented. Design cannot just be a flat piece of metal with lines traced or etched into it. It must have embossed areas. Your letter specifically needs to be embossed or raised. This should be the um, area of the metal that sticks out the most. Um, you need to make sure that your edges are clearly defined um, so your shapes or images stay um, the way that you drew them. They don't merge out into the empty space. They also need to be smoothly embossed, um, so you'll be doing layers of pressure, and if you don't take time to go back over them, you can see um, your pressure lines in the metal. Um, and it should also be smoothly etched as well. You want to be careful that you're not using too much pressure that you uh, tear the metal as well. Okay, so let's take a look at how to do this step. Make sure that you have removed your draft paper from your metal. You need to work on a phone book. This is because the metal needs a soft material to stretch into as you add pressure. If you work on the table, there is nowhere for the metal to go and you will not get the height that you want for your embossing or etching. Um, your design should be already transferred to the metal. Um, you're going to use some different embossing tools as you are working on the metal. So something you can do to help you is to write back in Sharpie on the back side of your metal so you know which side is the front and which is the back. When I start embossing, I like to work with my wooden tool um, that has a point to it. You can see right here I'm working on the back side of my metal and I am tracing very carefully next to um, the edge of my letter. This helps to create a guide for the pressure and helps to keep the design from stretching outside of the lines. Remember, anything that you trace or use pressure on the metal will show up in the metal. So you cannot remove any lines once they are added. Take your time. There is no erasing, redoing, or restarting due to the cost of the metal. Here are the tools that we are going to use for metal working. The ones that have flat edges work really well for smoothing or flattening areas of your design. The points work for etching and for tracing around the edges of your design. The ones that have rounded edges are the ones that we use for embossing. And like I mentioned, a permanent marker like a Sharpie works well for this too. As I start to emboss in the next video, I'm going to move to the plastic rounded tool that you see on the right. Again, I'm working on the back side of my metal. I'm using the rounded curve of the plastic tool to apply light layers of pressure to force the metal out on the other side. You want to be careful that you don't apply too much pressure too fast because this can cause tears in the metal. So as I emboss, sometimes I get what are called wrinkles in the design. So when this happens, you can take one of the flat tools, um, like the plastic flat one here and go over it, or I could take um, the flat pointed tool and use the bottom of it to apply some pressure on the wrinkle to flatten the wrinkle. If your wrinkle is near the edge like this one, you're also going to want to do what I call refining the edges, where you flip your metal over and work next to the embossed area with the point, taking and pressing down to help kind of redefine or clean up the edges of your shape. You are going to start on the side of the metal that you plan to add pressure to. So if you are embossing, you're going to add pressure to the back to force the metal out on the front. If you are etching, you will apply pressure to the front, which will force the metal backwards or create an indentation or a lowered area in your design. I usually start from the center and work my way out to the edges. This way I'm less likely to flatten areas that I have already embossed. I would recommend starting with your letter. Remember, your letter should be embossed to help make it a focal point. Because it will also be your largest item, you will be able to get the highest um, levels of embossing in this area. Remember, you're going to achieve this height through multiple layers of pressure. In between your layers of pressure, you need to refine your edges of your shape. So I flip my metal over back to the front side, I take my wooden pointed tool, and I retrace applying pressure along the edges of the shape to help make the edges clear and clean. And I go back and forth between the two sides until the embossing is the height that I desire. 
If you're seeing a lot of lines in your embossing, one of the things you can do is take the flat tool and go over those areas to smooth them out. Or you can also use like your Sharpie or a rounded tool and do um, some more layers of light pressure. Sometimes you'll get rips in the metal, like right here I applied a little bit too much pressure. What you will do is flip it over to the back side, press the rip back together, and then you'll use a little bit of masking tape to secure it. Once you color it, you won't even notice it. Once I had my letter completely embossed, then I moved on to my border details. I decided to emboss the paintbrush and the pencil to make them feel more like the actual objects. So let's take a quick look at etching. To do the pencil lines as part of the border, what I did was I worked on the front of my metal. I used my pointed tool and I added some light pressure um, in the groove and then I flipped it over to the back side and traced around my edges to keep my etching from stretching into other areas. And I did this throughout the entire etched area. Now, if you have an area that uses both embossing and etching, here's my tip for you. I tried it several different ways and this is what I found worked best. I went ahead and treated each part as an individual section of the um, shape. So I traced, I retraced the design on the front of the volleyball, and then on the back side, I went into each individual space of the volleyball and added pressure to each of those individual spaces. Once they were all embossed, I flipped it back over, retraced my lines, then I flipped it back over again, added another layer of pressure, to create the embossing. With the pencil, I found that if I embossed the whole thing and then added the lines, I could do it, but my lines, my etching lines weren't as clear and it also started to crush the metal a little bit. So in the end, my letter was embossed, the top page of the book was embossed, the paintbrush was embossed, the music notes were embossed, the pencils were embossed. For etching, I had etching in the dots around the music notes. I also had in the etched in pencil line um, as well as I etched in my name. So there was a balance between areas that were raised and areas that were indented or lowered in the design. 